Um, I kind of want to look at this, but I don't really know if people really want to watch it. It's kind of like what Bellier said about BFA's, like, their, uh, the Q&A response. Do you guys care about that or, or not? Like, I, I am kind of curious to see it, but, uh, what, what do you guys think? Watch it? Yeah, I, I kind of do want to see what they're saying. Watch it? Okay, yeah, sure. All right, let, let's see what this is. B Blizzard? What does it say? Blizzard, respond. Blizzard, respond. Please respond, Blizzard, to BFA's harshest criticism that they chose. But do they get it? Do they get it or do they get God? We'll find out. I just want to make one point clear. Bellior is better at editing videos than me. Like, substantially better. I said this before, last video I saw. I want to reiterate that point. He is better than me. Like, I can barely even get, like, a two frames together. And he's got, like, all this crazy shit going on. It's insane. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the news. So, on Thursday, I was feeling great about the weekend. The script for the news was written. Things were looking brilliant. And then I refreshed Twitter. It was doing a MA, it was going down the next day, Friday, and, uh, well, there had been a lot of discussion within the community about the state of BFA. Of course, last week I released the first part of my critique, Preach uh, released a video, and others like Soul and Pyro. Sorry, I had to read one comment on, on uh, in chat. Someone said, World of Hairlines. I'm gonna go back into VOD, I'm gonna ban you done the same and all of this followed weeks of increasingly intensifying negative sentiment within the community which was kind of punctuated by one or two spicy bugs the release of warfronts and a bit of a communication gaffe there was a yeah. lot to sort through but ultimately the buck stops with ian so he decided that he would take to reddit now as an aside with the in-game stuff, I've just got into Arena and it's awesome. It's really handy for my schedule. The gameplay True. feels endlessly deep and it's a lot True. of fun. So while I'm critical of WoW right now, it's worth bearing in mind, I still am actually personally getting quite a lot of enjoyment out of it. But before same. we get into all that, I have an announcement. I'm Very going to be same. at EGX next week in Birmingham. And not as a visitor Fuck though, I am exhibiting our game. So if you are around, be sure to hit up our stall. Cool. And um, yeah, that'll be really cool. And you can see the game. And then another news, the Master 2 over on Patreon now has an addition thing and the art is in for this month so uh yeah these are a bunch of fun to put together you can check them out uh in the um the description below and uh yeah you can check that out and uh, hit me up at egx and see what we've got so time for the reddit ama and first i've got to explain where i'm coming from and one of my tweets last night really does that best so i'm more interested in discussing their so design loud, intentions anyway. rather than the quality of the execution of those intentions a lot rides in the execution i'm not taking that away from them but i think their real problems are deeper so basically i believe that the overarching systems of world of warcraft face a number of significant and foundational issues and they are the first principles cause of many of the complaints the players have. So while talking about the immediate problems might be the most um, you know, apparent thing to do and solving them probably is a good thing, I do believe that it's akin to having a serious medical problem and only taking painkillers. Sure, the painkillers will help you feel better now, but they're not really going to fix the problem. True. Now, suffice to say that means that I did find most of this to be quite underwhelming. Most of it's, the times okay. spent wow. basically explaining how systems work, talking about the odd tweak here or there, and saying that he agrees they should have communicated things better. Now, Glad the inherent did limitation that. of this approach is that people who are not happy with the fundamental systems, they're going to feel like they're being talked past. And I think that's something that we see when we look at the broad reaction of the AMA with quite a few of the questions, at least last time I checked last night, being sort of downvoted. Now, um, with that in mind, though, let's just proceed. So first of all, patch 8.1, perhaps, because they made an announcement. So um, there's a patch that's going to hit PTR very soon, and Ian said they're going to be doing a Q&A stream next Tuesday. Now, this is a very good Pretty step content. forward, especially because the reactions to the AMA were kind of lukewarm. Hot fixes, of course, they could balance and they can tune, but a patch lets them shake up the fundamentals a little. Um, now, in dealing with systems, you'd be surprised how even a small change can have a large result in the game feel at the end. So that really is what I'm the going to be hoping hair. for as we enter the patch testing process. Interestingly, he didn't say patch 8.1, so I almost wonder if it's like an 8.0.5 style patch that's a more targeted uh, response to feedback. So with that, let's get into the actual topics. And uh, yeah, okay. that's all right. So I've got a lot to say about this, and really you'll find 
and much of it was said in the first part of my BFA critique, so do check that out. Ian basically said that they need to tweak and balance the traits a lot and that there will be more yes. um, in the future. And sure, yes. that's good. And the immediate problem of Azerite will be reduced by taking those steps. And um, he also explained the basics of how Azerite works and their intent. But as I said earlier, really, I want to hear his thoughts on the effectiveness of that intent, because that's where I think the actual problem is. Um, now, this talk of balance is fine, but to me, it's just noise. It's secondary to the actual problems, and I don't really care that much. Uh, personally, I'd rather Azerite armor just didn't exist and that... Um, instead, the Heart of Azeroth acted as an expansion uh, specific talent tree where you could unlock wow. new traits for your Heart of Azeroth and you just basically, you would shift right click on your HOA and do stuff in there. Wow. I think that would just be a better UI and UX. Now, That'd be back big. To the, um, the balance topic, to be honest. That would be really I mean, big. Right, Ian talks about how Holy you, shit. You know, generally they want you to look at item level and have that be just the main thing. And that kind of makes sense. Um, that's been their line for years. Uh, if you're going to boil gear down into one number, you should probably want that number to be accurate in terms of relative power levels. The thing is that you yeah. have to balance it right. Warlords of Draenor and Legion both had big unbalances with secondary stats, which eroded the meaning of item level, uh, sometimes for specific specs, more than others. Okay. And then with Azerite, it's just a joke. Like, a 370 can be worse than a 340. Now, That's the great. game is over a decade old at this great stage, game. I don't think that significant balance issues like this should be making it to life. Um, now, in fairness, the microscope is on Blizzard more than most devs because of simming, which is not common practice for most other games. Okay, um, okay. But, yeah, I... I really think they just need to take a, a different a different approach to how they deal with some of these systems because I don't think what they've been doing has really been working out how they would um, how they would want it to. Next up, we've got Warfronts. Uh, yeah, they caused sort of reward based drama. Warfronts and, drama. Um, the gameplay caused drama, and I suppose the time gaining like also caused drama. So Ian explained how the time gaining works, but he didn't really get too deep into things past that, other than to say that more Warfronts would be released and that the unlock periods would interweave. So this seemingly confirms that multiple war fronts could be up at the same time now on the topic of gearing they agree that having no minimum item level was not great and um yeah you know that, who that cares so why would sense. that even matter and, and really just said some content things like they don't really want to do it completely invalidate other types of content now one comment Wait. caught me though he said we're crafting systems with an eye towards the grand scheme of the game as it unfolds chinchilla thing of three months and uh, viewed each warfront as being kind of in the same vein as to a rotating event like time walking that comes around every third okay. week. Now, something like that, you know, I think that's viewing things from a very bird's eye level. It's very divorced from the player experience. And that can be fine when thinking about the overall flow of the game. But I do worry that sometimes they don't spend enough time thinking about, say, the 15 minutes to 15 minute gameplay loop of WoW and, and you know, if that is fun. To be honest, I think that's where World of Warcraft faces the largest problems. And this that's is big. probably where most of their effort needs to go, particularly when it comes to non-raid, non-dungeon and non-PVP content. Warfronts do seem to be fine on a grand scale, in my opinion, but really it's the gameplay that I think is a bit of an issue. Next up, Islands. Yes. So the core player problem is that the non-AP loot of Islands had been very rare, and um, Ian said they agreed and they're bumping up that the, wasn't it. Of the rewards and that they're looking into shaking up the Island generation formula. Now, as for the Islands feeling a bit too frenetic and fast-paced, he said that kind of had to be the case for the Alliance versus Horde theme, but he does get that it hurts the exploration theme. And I think that's pretty exploration? fair. Exploration? It isn't a response that's going to win anyone over, though. Um, it's pretty much saying this is how Islands Give are. Give me a fucking break. Tweets. Now, that is fine, but when yeah, people right. fundamentally dislike the gameplay of the Islands, that response is not really going to do too much for them. So, I agree the tweaking okay. is a good thing, but on the longer term, I think large and foundational changes should be considered. People just now, Ian did say that he was interested in using the systems developed for Islands elsewhere, and I entirely agree. And the world, oh, good, we'll have sneaky Pete everywhere it, because you keep on saying the world that's is great the character of World of Warcraft, but basically, the world is an inefficient UI that's used to access world quests. And that's something I just cannot bring myself to touch. It's really sneaky. Fear of damaging my own mental health. So, you know, especially when games other than World of Warcraft exist where there's just more fun stuff to do. So I think they need to take a big look at the world and they really need to think about how they can bring Azeroth to life. And thankfully, some of the tech behind Islands, especially the UI or the, um, the AI, 
it's really cool tech. And no I one think cares. If they were to apply that to the world, they could see great benefits for the game. No and one maybe cares about that. Content is something that I would be interested in touching. Captain again. Ambulance, you should attend to give the subs. The Thank you so much, man. Someone asked a question Holy about shit, it's like balance. 60 now. That was good and all. Thank you so much, man. Not really super interested to me, interesting to me because it's not really philosophical in nature, but the OP snuck in a second question about the inter-expansion homogenization of systems. Now, this is my largest personal concern with WoW, and Ian said this. he didn't really understand what the question was getting. Oh, well, yeah, remember this? If you're Ian and you're watching this, or if you're in the WoW dev team, I am going to have a video that basically covers that very soon. Um, I think it's about to go up on Patreon for the next few days, probably will be on the channel next week. Basically, yeah. here's the point. If you have expansion-wide systems, then the content that exists within those systems has restrictions um, in terms of the duration, reward, style, um, or months. gameplay style Thank you, so gaming. Now, if those systems then exist between expansions, then the gameplay experiences of two expansions end up feeling rather homogenized together. So for me, Battle for Azeroth feels like a big Argus and not a new expansion. A world quest in Asuna is like a world quest in Argus, which is like a world quest in Stormsong. I was bored of them by 7.1, and I'm still bored of them in 8.0. Next up, Mythic Plus. So, communication over the Mythic Plus True. cache really ticked people off. It wasn't really the, that they had changed their design, it's that it wasn't really communicated by the team. And, you know, they, they made their change pretty much just before pre-patch hit. That's something which, you know, it, it hit right when Lying the had a Andy. player count. Also, Battle for Azeroth That's did Blizzard. not have max level pre-made characters unlike every other beta test for a WoW expansion that I've been a part of. And that massively reduces the number of players who'd be testing in-game content. Yep. Now, as for the change itself, basically, sure instead would. of weapons and Azerite gear having a chance to drop in addition to a weekly reward, it's now just one item, but there's a bad luck protection for the Azerite gear. Now, according to Ian, the intended strength of Mythic Plus is the quantity of decent gear, while the weakness of it is kind of the top end of the quality, and that raids are really the place to do that, which, yeah, I suppose that does make sense. Next, reputation. Agreed. So they came up, and uh, basically a lot of players still want them to be account-wide. And I don't agree. I think that stuff should be character-specific. That's right. With alt catch-up. So look at what that, Miss yeah. Maria did. Now, Ian did say the Champions of Azeroth catch-up right. is pretty likely to happen, and it's something to work on. 100%. Make, make people happy. But to me, it doesn't hit the core He problem. knows. Reps have been awful for years. Warlords of Draenor had mob grinds, then Legion had basically homogenized them into world quests, and Battle for Azeroth did the same thing. Now, in the past, reputations had their own distinct feel, even though they mostly were quest-based. So um, the Skedis That's people a, it's felt very true. to the Netherwing people. Yes. Which felt different to the Shattered Sun people because the style of gameplay, the cadence of quests, all of those I never thought about it like this. Reputations. And this is really, it's really a good point. And like a bit of a larger thing, like they were more unique instead of just something that naturally happens based on what zone you happen to be doing a quest Yeah, this in. is very true. And I think this goes back to the systems homogenization point that I brought up earlier. Now, let's talk about Paragon reps. He said they're probably coming back. And, uh, you know, some people think I'm a masochist, but I'm not that much of a masochist that I'm going to go and uh, farm world quests for Paragon bags. Nope, not going to touch that. Yeah, who would right, do that? About time gating. Ian said that the time gating stuff is pretty much there to manage gameplay. Things like weekly lockouts in the past, of course, prevent raiders from raiding infinitely. The same goes for world quests, which are kind of time gated for the, the same reason. So you get your burst of efficiency for the emissary. Now, Ian was talking mainly yep. about the really sensible sort of time pacing things like that. He didn't really cover warfronts and content releases in the context of time gating. And I think that's where it gets harder. And I think that's really what people wanted to hear a lot more about. So yeah. if we were to go through, say, the Warfront schedule, well, then I think stuff gets a little bit tr more tricky because if it's always open to do, then people will run through them really quickly to start, they'll get sick of them, and they'll abandon them. But if a Warfront is once per week, or, you know, one, one week out of every 3.5, say, then it feels like an event, and you won't run into that burnout problem as quickly. Now, I think that's I agree an with that. mission that the content of Warfronts just do. isn't designed to be fun in the long term and that making them event-based is kind of the best way to get the most out of them. Now, I, agree. You know, I don't think that worries about this would have existed, to be honest, if BFA had more of a expansive like side to its end game. If so it right now it's very progression-focused. There's no equivalent of Suramar or Withered. Um, the weathered scenario and some of those things would be like the little activities that you would do sort of in between other bits of content i think if that stuff existed then people wouldn't be as ticked off about say um you know waiting on the bar to go down for the um for the warfront Next up, we've got to talk about class balance. So overall, basically, they're trying to give specs to find gameplay niches that they excel in. 
and um, you know just have them be okay in other areas and that's okay. really worked out great for some specs but of course it didn't hit the mark for everything especially the shaman dps specs now from my point of view in beta they kind of ran out of time but they did communicate to people that those things are being looked at in they ran out of and time that's really what he went over i think maybe that question would have came just on their own release schedule maybe he was a little bit more specific about some of the changes they would like to do but then in an ama like this i do understand how you know oh, he can't say on. too much because if he does he can't it's treated as committal right so he can't i suppose from from my point of view that's why i'd like to hear more about the real underpinning philosophy of things like a few levels deeper than really what we got into here so yeah that's pretty much it for the interesting stuff to be honest i am underwhelmed uh, i'm a bit hopeful for the future though because right now I'm enjoying playing the arena a lot, but of course, while I recognize the game's really fun for me, I also recognize that's because I've only, you know, I've, I've opted out of the bits that I don't like, and more than ever, so he's only the doing arena. That I've opted out of. So, like, if I was a serious raider, I understand that I wouldn't wow. have the choice to opt out of that stuff. I might feel pressured into doing content that I don't enjoy. As an example, I just don't grind AP. I don't care. But it's Same. not like that for everyone, and that means that not everyone is going to have as fun of a time in World of Warcraft as I am. So I'm, I'm trying to like put myself into other people's shoes and kind of empathize with that because it does sound like a pretty bad situation to be in. So on the whole, look, I do absolutely commend Ian for doing this. Of course, it's not the easy thing to do. And um, if I had the chance to say something to him, I would say that while I really do appreciate him talking about very immediate problems and explanations of how this certain is, things I, I are, what I was about to say. Yes. what I really want to hear about is the underlying philosophy and maybe an acknowledgement that their current mode of thinking is clearly not working for a broad enough segment of the player base. And I don't feel like those people will have had their concerns really being answered yes. or met. Um, yeah, so it's fine to talk about short-term tweaks and balances, but I think the game broadly, like, I think the ship is steering in a kind of unhealthy direction a little bit. I think we need a bit of a course correction, and it, that just requires a different sort of discussion. Now, yes. that's something I'm really going to be covering a lot in my future critique video, which is all about an expansion-wide system homogenization and then inter-expansion system homogenization and how I believe that is leading to a game that is less exciting, inspiring to people. Even though if you look at BFA's zones, art, music, some of the storylines, it is you know some of the best work they've ever produced. It's just some of those end game problems. But yeah, if there was one video you were to watch Very on the true. channel this month, it would be that upcoming uh, critique one. But yeah, look, here's to 8.1. I wish them the greatest of success with it. I really do. The patch well, yeah. is a big opportunity to improve the state of things. And at the end of the day, as much as I'm critical of the game now, I mean, I'm still covering it for a reason. I still enjoy it. It's still an important part of my life. And obviously, I want that to be as good as it possibly can be. And that's why I'm so focused on doing Real. these critiques. And with the critiques, what I try to do is just lay out what I think in as unemotional a way as I can. Now, of course, you know, I'll spice it up a little bit. I'll say, you know, world quests are bad for my mental health, which I said in this video, which I mean, yeah, that, that kind of is how I feel. But in general, uh, my, my goal is to be a little bit yeah. more detached, a little bit, try to be analytical and try to make um, sort of points divorced from myself. But yeah, overall, I do, of course, just want to hear what you've got to say about all this and really what you think they could improve with this expansion, ideally through tweaks to systems that would have a large downstream effect. I think that's a very interesting um, area for fixes yep. to be um, happening in. And if you look at games like Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 and the concept of the modern mega patch that really doesn't add a whole bunch of content, but makes important systems tweaks and how those patches can really revive games. It'd be very interesting to hear what you've got to say. So, a big thank you to you for watching this video. I know it was dry and not particularly exciting or fun, but, uh, you know, I think Ian went out there to cover important topics, and uh, it's only right that we kind of talk about the important topics. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. You can check out the Patreon stuff for these lovely guys, and uh, with that, I will see you next time. It's a good video. Uh, I, I think I pretty much agreed with all, but I think the last point that he made was probably the most important point, though. Everything else besides that was kind of like whatever. It didn't really matter. But the point that he... Oh. Oh, wow. Check out... Oh, okay, I, I don't need the, the eel. I do not need the eel. Uh, check the comments. I mean, they're probably just a bunch of dumbasses, right? I mean, that's generally the people in the comments every time. Holy shit, thank you, Soul Youth. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude.
God damn. Carnivorous Slasher. Oh my god. Thank you so much, man.